Welcome, I'm Brian Hayes. I'm a Salesforce and Pardot consultant with Rotiv, and we help small businesses automate their processes. In this video, we're gonna talk about Slack and Chatter. You know, I often hear from our clients, they ask, when should we be using Slack? When should we be using Chatter? You know, what are the differences? Should we use both? In this video, we're gonna look at when you should use Chatter and when you should use Slack. And we'll talk about three different company scenarios that we run into. The first one is the company that only uses Chatter. The next one is the company that only uses Slack. And the third is the company that uses both. And we'll try to explain when we recommend each of those scenarios to help you figure out if you should be using these tools. So if you're brand new to Slack and Chatter and you don't know too much about those tools, we've got a couple links in the description to other videos to introduce you because we're not gonna go into the basics in this one. Uh, we're also not gonna go feature by feature in terms of a comparison. At the end of the day, you know, both tools have a lot of crossover when it comes to posting messages or applying to messages or at mentioning colleagues. And ultimately Slack has many more features. It's a lot more powerful, has many more integrations than Chatter. But what we're gonna focus on is the business use case. You know, when would you use one versus the other or both? So let's take scenario number one, a company that is only using Chatter. They're not using Slack or Teams or something similar. Well, this can be a really good solution for a company that's not worried about real-time chat going back and forth, because Chatter just isn't a great solution for that. Instead, it's a really good forum. It's a great place for you to work asynchronously. So if that's an important part of your culture, you don't want everybody necessarily to be online at the same time, you know, texting back and forth, then Chatter is a good solution for the business that wants to simplify their tech stack. The reason for that is because Chatter has a feature built into it called groups. And groups can be used for including different people within the company. So you might have a sales team as a group. You might have the party planning committee. You might have a group that's for non-work related interests. And if you're working asynchronously, these groups are a great forum to still have that communication and to build that culture within your business. Uh, and then of course, Chatter has the ability to have those conversations directly on a record and in the context of a record as well. So if you're asynchronous, you're not worried about real time back and forth, then Chatter could be a complete solution for you. Let's go to the second scenario, a company that's only using Slack. So Slack can be used for asynchronous communication as well, if you set it up that way and, and you have processes within your company for that, but it really does a great job at real-time communication, messaging back and forth through a chat. And so a, a company that might get away with only using Slack and not using Chatter really falls into two scenarios in this case. The first one is they just don't have any need to post conversations or post messages on a record. The context of that Salesforce record doesn't matter much to them. It doesn't come up that often. If that's the case, then they could just use Slack. The reason for that is because the groups feature in Chatter can easily be replaced by channels within Slack. You know, here in our Slack, we've got a marketing team channel, a sales channel, etc. So I certainly wouldn't recommend using groups in Chatter and Slack channels. If you've got Slack set up, I would use Slack for that type of communication. But having a conversation on a record is a strength of, of Chatter. It does a better job at that than, than Slack. So another scenario where a company could just use Slack is if it's really predictable when they're gonna need to have communication about a record. So for example, we have a client that has a high touch sales process. So every single opportunity gets its own Slack channel and they have conversations in that Slack channel about that specific opportunity. Well, because this is so predictable, we can automate it. And as Salesforce is investing more and more in the integration, uh, it's becoming easier to do that. So every time an opportunity is created, a Slack channel is made and people are invited to that channel. As long as it's predictable or they don't need to have conversations on records at all, Slack is a great solution and we don't really need chatter. The one thing that we don't wanna get in the middle of is if it's not predictable. You don't wanna be automatically creating a bunch of Slack channels if no one's gonna use them. It's gonna clutter up your system and it's also gonna cause people to miss out on any of those channels where there is a conversation because they'll be used to and expecting that there's nothing of value within those auto-generated channels and they'll skip right past them. 
So if you know you're gonna need to have a conversation about every record, or it's at least predictable, or you don't need to have conversations on records at all, Slack on its own is a good tool. Okay, now the third scenario, using Slack and Chatter together. This is what I see most often, and this is actually what we do in our business. We're using Slack and Slack channels to replace groups. We can have lots of company conversations there. We even connect with our clients and with partners through Slack, and it ends up being a, a great tool for that type of communication. But we also use Chatter whenever we need to talk about a specific record. So this is opportunities, cases, and projects. Now for us, it's just not consistent. We don't need to have a conversation on every opportunity. Similar with cases, as they come in and we're solving support tickets, we don't always need to get people involved in that. And it would be overkill to create a channel for every case that was generated from Salesforce. So instead, we use Chatter. When we need to work together on something, we'll at mention each other and move that project along. And this is what I see in most businesses. They're using Slack for the social side to have conversations and work on aspects of the business that aren't related to specific records. And they're using Chatter to discuss specific records. Most businesses, it's not entirely predictable. So for now, both tools are useful. Now, our recommendation here might change over time. You know, again, Salesforce just purchased Slack not so long ago. So as they're working on bringing these two tools closer together, I would expect that they're gonna make it uh, a lot easier to maintain uh, and easier to create channels in Slack from Salesforce and hopefully give us some more tools to automate within the system. So as that changes, our recommendation might change, but for now, we would recommend using Chatter only if you're an asynchronous company and you want a simplified tech stack, using Slack only if you don't need to have conversation on records or if the conversations you do need to have are very predictable. And then the third option of using both when you need to sometimes have conversations on records and other times want to take advantage of Slack channels and, and those, those good features that come along with the tool. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please click the like button. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this from us, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.